वेलकम डॉक्टर एजाज रसूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द इश्यू ऑफ गुड एंड इविल विच हैज कन्फ्रंटेड ह्यूमैनिटी फॉर एजेस कुड यू थ्रो सम लाइट ऑन दिस इश्यू एंड इट्स बैकग्राउंड थैंक यू फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टू शेयर माय थॉट्स एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कुरान विद ऑल ऑफ यू आई रेड थ्रू द वर्क ऑफ गुलाम अहमद परवेज एंड विद लॉट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट in the last uh, about 20 years my own background is that i have done msc in water engineering uh, previously i was i have done a bachelor's degree in engineering and uh, later on i did a phd in water treatment i worked in the water industry in 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 scotland in the uk the interest which was in the quran uh, took a really uh, big leap forward when i studied the human psychology at my own somewhere around 2004 2005 and uh, during that period i looked at the basic human problem that why human beings do not look at the wider issues of life and they are very much confined to their own local environment we are influenced by families and we are influenced by the society in which we live and now with so many nation states in the world we think at a national level you know as nationalist and uh, we are too much focused on the physical side of life and we do not look at the wider issues and that is why essentially there are two concepts of life one says that the life ends with death and the other one says that the life goes beyond death and most people live this life as if life will end with death even those people who are religious you will if you look at their life very closely they say that the religion side that the ritual side will provide them some kind of paradise which is related to god essentially to please god to get a life in the hereafter but life of everyone is more or less similarly lived up to the point of death and this is what forced me to think into these issues and i said can we get a proof of the hereafter within our own selves because our reality the reality of each one of us lies within us and that is where the question of uh, good and evil uh, we can resolve could you expand on this as to why human intellect cannot determine absolute good and evil at its own Yes, the limitation of human intellect is that we are emotive at a fundamental level. Our own desires come first. Each one of us seeks more happiness and wants to minimize his own pain. And if we look at it that what it is is a very easy question that whatever we see the way we see the world is what it is, but what it should be or what it ought to be is a difficult question. and even within the science we know what it is but once it comes to utilizing those things that is where the values come in and all of these values are relative because my benefit may be a loss to you for example in our daily living we will see that there are people who always work and that is where the question of profit and loss comes in human beings work for their own profit and whole capitalist system is based on that successful is that man who earns more profit and in that accumulation of profit there might be thousands of people who will go probably hungry at night yeah. if we see that like, uh, in in america presently there is a presidential uh, campaign is going on and senator bernie sanders is talking about these things the top of the you know 0.1% or 1% the top of uh, wealth of something like 50% people in in america and because the capital is attracting capital this is inbuilt in the capitalist system so question of good and evil cannot be found by human intellect because human intellect by virtue of its nature by virtue of possessing emotions and desires will contaminate anything where it makes a decision it will always look for its own benefit that is why even in the political system the parliaments everywhere you will see laws being made which favor rich more than the poor for example in america recently you know few years ago the administration gave tax cuts to the rich the rich who are already rich are being given tax cuts because everyone thinks that the life will end with death and we cannot solve these problems unless we come to the quranic values and the higher purpose of life 
and that is where the law of requital comes in, that is where the permanent values comes in, come in, and that is where the development of the self comes into it. And that is why we need an external standard as a revelation from Allah, which should provide us guidance. Because we don't have inner guidance. I will always follow my desires. So that becomes the purpose of my life. So where is the guidance? If I follow my, my own desire, the others will go poor because I am accumulating more for myself. This is the problem that human beings cannot determine or define absolute evil and absolute good. So it has to come from someone who is not emotive. And Allah has given this revelation in the Quran and the Quran asks us to look into it and see can it give the solution to our problem. So we need external guidance unlike animals. In an unjust society where there is no concept of the hereafter and the law of requital, how can someone apply the Quranic values? Very easy and very difficult. I, I looked into it easy because if we understand the law of requital and the effects of my deeds on myself and I start taking responsibility, then things will gradually start the situation will become apparent to us that how to deal with the situation. But if I do not understand the law of requital, then essentially I am on the crest of the events. Whichever the events will take me, I will go there. And this is a problem with because we don't see the whole reality. Quran presents us as a whole reality, not in bits and pieces, because it is coming from the ultimate reality. Even Muslims don't, don't realize that this book is a complete book. It is indivisible. You can't divide it into that I will take this piece, this suits me, or this piece. You will never get those results unless we look at it completely. Our difficulty is the human beings that we want immediate results. I want to do something and earn a profit tomorrow. Doesn't matter in the process, 20 people might go hungry. And Quran says because the life is not going to end with death, it gives us a different perspective. It says that whether whatever you do today, it will affect your tomorrow. And when it says tomorrow, it doesn't put a time limit there. I'll give you a small example that I'm hungry and I can eat anything. I can steal something. My body will not be affected. I, I, it, will, it will have the same impact. The stolen food will exactly have the same effect as compared to the food which is earned through hard work. But the value will be different. You know, in one case, I have stolen something that will affect myself. In the other case, where I have earned myself, that will affect myself differently. So, Quran brings the self into it. And that is where the absolute good and absolute evil comes into play. That what is good for myself, which can give me life in the hereafter. And when I say hereafter, the Quran says does not mean the life beyond death. It means life literally hereafter. That is tomorrow is my hereafter of today and day after tomorrow. So at that level, that is why Quran says every self will taste death. So it is separating, dissociating self from death. And this is a factual position of the Quran and one can test it. It is not I'm saying that it is otherworldly. By following this path, by understanding the law of requital, the change which comes within us, the reality which we acquire, the new reality which we acquire is totally different from that reality which we have lived outside those values. Most people assume and accept that the life ends with death. People in the West have moved away from Christianity and have no interest in any religion. Various religions still have heavy following in the underdeveloped world, how can we present the Quran to develop interest in its message, which has the solution of human problems through the system of Deen? Very good question. I have looked at it very closely because at one stage I was very religious myself, so I know exactly what sort of a mentality I had and what sort of an understanding I had. Uh, there is no derogatory you know, comment here. The issues which we have are that in the West, in, in the 18th, 19th century, 
because of industrialization and colonization and uh, the capitalist system developed and people moved away from the religion because they thought that the religion is putting chains on their thoughts and people it did not appeal them because religion was giving that concept of the hereafter and this life, which was, did not appear very logical. Like Richard Dawkins has written a book, God Delusion, and he discusses that. In fact, I sent him a letter as well and drawn his attention towards the Quran and its values. And the Quran which we are presenting is also a product of somehow we are looking at it through religious lens, which is in, in a way is unfair to the Quran. The Quran has to be approached with an unbiased mind with a view to understand that, that how the human intellect or consciousness can develop. And it's very easy. I know what sort of a human being I am and what, is, what are the contents of my consciousness, right? At any point in time, what are my values and how do I look at the life? And then I go to the Quran and see, does Quran think like this? And you will see there is a, a huge difference between the two. Human mind cannot produce anything like the Quran, but it can understand it through its own intellect and reasoning. Because we are looking for a solution, and all the solutions which are being presented today are nowhere near to solving human problems. We solve one problem and we create another problem. Some are deliberate problems, some are the consequences of those problems. So, when the West moved away from Christianity, that gave birth to science discoveries because human beings were no more fearful of the religious God. But in the underdeveloped world, somehow either it is deliberately being created or it is the consequential and people are not willing to bring in intellect and reasoning to address it. And there is a need to question human problems because Quran asks us to look at the world as a whole rather than as 200 countries. Because essentially, any human being anywhere in the world is just like me. I'm being born, the children like me are being born in every house, in every part of the world. And they're exactly the same as myself. Now, then we can see that if a child goes without food, uh, without uh, education, and without the means of physical life, He's never going to even think about the higher issues of life or higher uh, aims of life. So essentially, I am, if I am causing that problem and that deprivation, I am in a way indirectly accountable for that. And so the world which we see, the unjust world which we see, and injustice and inequality and cruelty and, and abuse which we are seeing, is the responsibility of each one of us. And the solution is in the Quran because it has come from the ultimate reality as a whole reality to us. So that is why, as, as I said, uh, you know, that, that absolute evil and absolute good is defined by the Quran because human beings cannot define it. So this is the reason, unless we define that, unless we look at the problem holistically in the light of the Quran, we will always struggle to find solution to human problems. And that means that the system given by the Quran, which is based on this factual assumption that the life goes beyond death, is called deen. In which, unlike the capitalist system, the two values in which it will be based is one, that the man should get what he strives for. And second is, everyone is responsible for his own deeds. Everyone carries his own burdens. In the first one, it's very simple. If I've done PhD, but as far as my needs are concerned, these are the same as any ordinary man in the street. So if I work from eight in the morning till five in the evening, and I get far more than my needs, and the other one not even gets enough for his needs, then this is inequality. And Quran brings into it the hereafter and the self's development and increase in consciousness, the vastness in consciousness as a reward for following this path. So the reward of following this path is inbuilt into it. And the disappearance of cognitive dissonance, the conflicts which we have in every mind in this world are because of this. Because 
these, when we see poverty, when we see inequality, when we see injustice being done to us and our children, particularly those at the lower strata of the family, they can't live a happy life. They will always have fear and uncertainty. And uncertainty destroys our life. It can never make us happy. And we come unhappy and then we leave unhappy. And we are never sure of what is coming in the hereafter. Whereas the Quran puts it right in front of us that once your reality, which is a fact, once it changes into Quranic reality, it will tell you where you are heading. It's inbuilt within us and we should, we should put it to test. It's very simple. It's a pragmatic test. We do it, we'll get it. Thank you. Any final thoughts on this subject? This is a very interesting subject. When I looked at it, and Pervez has written a lot on this in all his books, and I looked at it because I've done some work on human consciousness as well. And human consciousness, which we acquire without the values of the Quran, can never reach that level. Because that is based on this assumption that the life ends with death. And whatever we do, we can't solve the problem of death. Why do we die? And we are never going to come back because the only route to come back is through procreation. And we are never going to come back. And whatever we create within ourselves through our experience as we live our life, that is real. And if that self has the ability to go through death to the other side, and if we haven't created that self which can then develop in the environment of the next life, then we are at loss. Because by virtue of, because the Quran says, and, and, and this is the fact that we have divine energy within us, which gives us free will. And this is where the hard problem of consciousness comes in. And we'll leave it for some other time. Thank you. So Thank you very much. much.